so good afternoon. Uh, my name is Sean Denda, uh, new to ARCOS this semester. Uh, the project I'm contributing to this semester is uh, Dr. Memory. I believe uh, Derek came in last semester. Yeah. All right, so I'll quickly talk about Dr. Memory, just a little bit, touch on it, and then I'll talk about my contributions to it. So it's a memory debugger. Does anyone use, is familiar with Dr. Memory, actually? Okay, a few. Valgrind? All right, a lot of hands. All right. So, uh, it's, yeah, it's pretty similar to this, uh, except it runs on both Windows and Linux. The primary author is Derek Bruning. He's a software engineer over at Google. It's built on top of Dynamo Rio, which is a runtime uh, code manipulation software. So if you have any, like, dynamic instrumentation you need to build, I'll check that out. Um, it also targets 32-bit applications. So the type of uh, error that it uh, detects, so you have unaddressable. So if you have memory that you haven't actually, like, allocated, and then your application tries to, like, touch it in any way, it'll uh, catch that. So a use-after-free vulnerability is an example. So if you uh, free up some memory, then you try and use it again, it'll uh, catch that. Uninitialized reads. So this is memory which is addressable, but you actually haven't written anything to it. But then if you try and read from it, it'll uh, catch that. That memory leaks, uh, pretty self-explanatory. So how it works. So to do this, uh, you need to track the state of the memory. So uh, it uses shadow memory, and really there's just uh, three states. So you have unaddressable, uninitialized, and defined. So it starts out unaddressable. Um, you see alloc something, that goes over to defined state. If you deallocate that, you're now back to uh, unaddressable, so on and so forth. So do this, uh, you have to monitor anything. So read and write, malloc, realloc, or on Windows, virtual alloc, any heat manipulations, stack adjustments, and then system calls. This is uh, where my contributions come in. So is anyone familiar? Why would a system call cause problems with an application like this? Call? Right, end up transferring into a different virtual memory or whatever. It can screw with the underlying structure so you can't monitor it correctly. Yeah, so whenever you have a system call, I mean, that's the kernel. You have a user mode application. You, can't, you don't really know what's going on there. So what you have to do is you have to emulate it. So you have to emulate these effects in uh, shadow memory. This isn't really a problem for uh, Linux because all the information is available. Because to emulate this, you need to know the type and size of each parameter you have. You have to know whether it's just input, so are you just going to be reading from it? So is the system call just going to be reading, or is it input and output? Will you actually be writing to it? Is there a structure being passed in, and are there certain uh, members which aren't initialized on input, and then the kernel initializes it? So these are the uh, things that I'm going to be looking into, specifically on Windows, because Windows doesn't like to document their things. So uh, Windows system calls. Essentially, there's two main sets. Uh, you can think of you've got your Linux and your graphical. A lot of them have been documented, uh, not really officially, just researchers out there doing uh, various things. So as of right now, the current revision, uh, about 1,096, so, and then 184. So there's still a handful for me to actually look into, and that's what I'm going to be doing this semester, looking into those sys calls. Um, I have a reversing. Has anyone really done any reverse engineering? Okay, got a couple people. So, I mean, I actually don't like coding much, so this was a cool project for me. I get to reverse engineer some system calls, and I just had a little uh, coverage of how I do it. I'll actually start trying to write some posts about what system calls I'm looking into. So right now I've been looking at the advanced local procedure calls. I've actually added in about support for 11 of them. So I'll uh, try and get a blog post out shortly on that. So basically, I just go through, I do uh, dynamic reversing. So if you have an application which invokes these system calls, you can easily see uh, how it's doing that. You can uh, print out a call stack, actually go through the DLL and see how it sets them up. Uh, the problem with that is you only get a small scope. A lot of uh, parameters in Windows system calls are actually uh, optional, so you can set it in the null byte. So if you're getting a lot of zeros, I mean, you've got to go check that out. This is where static, so you actually can hook up a local kernel debugger, actually dump the code and go through it. You can easily check through it. Slower, but you get full code coverage. Um, that's pretty much the gist of it. Uh, just look for a blog post. Are there any questions? All right. Well, I mean, huh? What? So what, uh, what challenge have you run into so far with trying to document Windows undocumented syscalls? 
All right. And I imagine with the optional parameters, are those mostly done by, because typically, syscalls, all the parameters are passed in registers. Mm -hmm. So are, th are they passing one of the parameters as a, uh, as a pointer to? So yeah, you, you have all a certain point. So if you have like a structure you send in, um, you got to mostly, Dr. Memory doesn't really care about it. It's just like an integer. But if it, you have a pointer, yeah, you have to be able to check on the reads. Um, if you have a structure, so as I was saying, one of the uh, structures I was looking at, Windows has these debugging files, and it actually included one of the structures in there. So I was like, oh, this is all good. So I went to like check it out. But it turns out um, in user space, they actually never even initialized one of the uh, member fields. So you have to check that, and that's what I have to look into. And then if you go into like actually dump the code in the kernel, you'll usually see a check like with flags. Um, and you'll see it, it'll just compare it to a null byte if it's null. It just runs through a set of like if statements to see where, what, what type of functionality it wants to do. And another thing about Windows syscalls is uh, they use a lot of reserve fields, so really just isn't used at all. If you look in the uh, kernel code, it'll just check it. If it's actually nothing, if it's not null or whatever, it'll just give you an error code. Um, I actually am not involved in the Linux portion at all, so I'm not too sure. Again, it's built on top of Dynamo Rio, which is both on Windows and Linux, so it uses a lot of that for its dynamic instrumentation. So basically, you just have to check it in the uh, shadow memory. All right, that's it.